thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hikvision AX Pro, which is available from Hikvisions through ourselves. Predominantly, it's going to be covering the PD Travel 62 compliance, which is now available in the AX Pro system. My name is Nathan Garner. I'm the Technical Pre-Sales and Projects Manager at Dynamic CCTV. And today we're also joined by Lynn Zhang, who will be able to introduce herself, who's from Hikvision UK, the webinar today as well. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Lynn Zhang. I am Product Manager for non-video product ranges. So that namely access control products, in-video intercom products, and also AX Pro <coughs> intrusion alarm products for Hackvision UK and Island. Thank you, Lynn. So we'll make a start. We've got some slides to go through and some videos showing mm. a few different bits today as well. Next one. So I'll run through kind of basic introduction to the X Pro range and just run over some of the different products that are available to tie into the X Pro alarm system. Lynn's then going to go through the PD Travel 62 compliance. We did originally have a live demo planned for this morning as well, but due to some issues with the Zoom platform, we've done pre-recorded pre videos this morning I'm showing different bits that we wanted to cover for the compliance side of things. And then Lynn's just going to introduce us to some of the future products that are going to be released as well. And then right at the end, we'll go through a bit of a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, if you put them in the Q&A section on Zoom, which should be able to see on the banner bottom of your windows, and then we'll be able to answer those questions right at the end of this webinar this morning. So what is the X Pro system? So generally as a basic thing, it is an alarm system, but it can also do a lot more than just being standard intruder alarm system. You can tie in home automation with the plug sockets. Uh, you've also got visual verification using the PIR cams, which will actually take snapshots when the PIR sensor is triggered. You've also got flood detectors, which will actually detect any water or anything like that if you put the units under a bath or something similar. You can have those come through. You've also got now fire detections uh, with the fire alarm that can be added into the X Pro itself as well. So it's a lot more of a comprehensive system, it ties in everything in one solution not just be a basic intruder panel and there is a lot more that you can do with it and then you've also got the added functionality of being able to link your CCTV cameras with the system and the rest of the Hikvision family um, with the different devices that are available. So as a general overview of the topology with the AX Pro system You've got your wireless zones, whether it be your door contacts, your panic alarms, or even your PIR sensors. Those all link back to your actual main hub using radio frequencies, which work on the 860 megahertz range. And that will also be the same for your wireless arming tools. So it can be one of the keypads or even the remote control which just has the arm and disarm buttons on there to be able to rip arm disarm system. And it's also the same with the sounders. So you've got your external sounders and also the internal sounders as well, which you can add to your AX Pro hub. Now then from the actual hub itself, there's a couple of different ways that the unit will connect to the internet. So you've got your ethernet connection also got Wi-Fi as well so you can connect to the Wi-Fi on site and you also have 4G connection as well uh, using a SIM card which can be used as a type of failover system so if the internet drops out or your broadband router should I say you can then use the 4G connection instead as well and you also have GPRS enabled with the SIM card allocation as well. 
Once it's then connected to the internet, you can link it up to ARC monitoring stations so they can receive the events through to their ARC stations, depending on the what the client wants with the actual system itself. And with the mobile phone system, you can use the Hit Connect app, which will, you'll see on some of the videos, which can do the configuration and is also what the end user would use to be able to receive the alarm events through and also arm and disarm the AX Pro alarm system through that. Generally, installers now would use the Hick Pro Connect, which is a webinar that we did a, a few months ago, which is more aimed at what the installer can do with the configuration and the maintenance side of things for that. So the key features of the AX Pro Alarm system, one of the main ones, especially for ourselves that, that we found most different to a lot of different intruder systems, is the ease of actually installing the actual system. Instead of having to use your old style programming on the actual panel itself, using the keypad, the actual configuration is all done through the app on your mobile phone which makes it a lot easier and a lot more user-friendly to configure your different settings of the actual system itself. And you've also got the flexibility of it being a wireless system. And for the actual wireless technology, it's called Tri-X, which is fast and reliable with the devices connecting to each other. And it does have anti-interference and anti-jamming security within the radio protocols to actually protect the integrity of the system um, to be able to provide your clients with the confidence of being stable and also secure with the design itself within that. So with the X Pro Hub specifications, the, there, are, there is a limitation on the amount of different devices that you can add in within the system which is displayed on there uh, with the units themselves. All of the hubs do come with battery backup if there is power loss. Um, so if there is power loss on site, as long as you've got a 4G SIM card installed, you would actually still get that notification through as well, because the hub would still actually be online and all of the sensors and the wireless sounders all have their own inbuilt battery as well. The wireless sounders, especially your external sounder, can be hardwired into mains power if you need to be able to wire it in there instead of relying on the battery power uh, for the units within them. So this is just an overview of some of the different products. So we've got the magnetic door contact, our stand PIR sensors, which we're going to take a look at with the PD Travel 62 compliance. You've also got the indoor siren as well. So this can be used as a sounder within the property itself. If there's an alarm triggered, it'll actually sound internally. And then your outdoor unit would be fixed to the outdoor of the property with the siren box for that. The main thing that makes it all work is the hub itself. And it does actually have a fob reader on the hub, which can be used for arming and disarming of the system and using the fobs that are available. And we've also got now the wireless keypad, so you can have a key code to arm and disarm your system or part arm. And then one of the newer ones is the PIR cam. So this takes your standard PIR detector and combines it with a camera as well. So when the PIR cam is triggered, it'll take a snapshot using the inbuilt camera which will then help you to verify whether or not it's a real alarm that's being triggered by the system and you'll receive those snapshots through to the Connect mobile app on there. And then we also have the emergency button which can be used as a panic alarm should anyone want to trigger that within the property if they feel under threat or anything like that you can use the emergency button um, as a panic alarm for the system. So I'm just going to go through a few of the different devices, just as a, an, an overview of the range that are available from ourselves. So we've got the wireless keypad, the key fob, and then the wireless tag reader, 
So these are the different devices that you'd use to arm and disarm the system. The wireless keypad would use a cord to arm and disarm. The key fob is generally what you'd use on your keychain for your car keys, where you can just use the buttons to arm and disarm the system for the actual site. And now we've also got the wireless tag reader. So initially it was just on the hub itself where you could place your fobs or your tags to arm and disarm. But now you can use the wireless tag readers added to the unit. So you can mount the, one of these near the exit point and the entry point and use it to arm and disarm the system as you leave the property on there. There's also now the wireless repeater. So this actually extends the range of the system itself. And so for larger properties or where the walls are thicker and it's confined the signal more, you can use the wireless repeaters to actually expand the distances that you can achieve above what's standard with the AX Pro Hub as well. Now there's a whole host of different indoor detectors. So we've got the wireless break glass detectors, which will actually detect if glass is broken or being smashed. It's also available when it's combined with a PIR sensor now as well. And we've also got the wireless magnets. So there's three different variants with these. So you've got the slim unit, the standard unit, and now there's one with a built-in shock detector. So if someone starts hitting the door, it would actually detect that before the door's forced open. So you can actually get the alert through sooner rather than when the door has been actually opened. It would trigger off the actual shocks that it detects by the detector itself. And, uh... Now this is the different devices that Hikvision class as the life safety. So these would be your emergency buttons and also your smoke detector and your leak detector, which can be added into the system and are both available now as well from ourselves. So smoke detectors can be added into the X Pro system, as well as the water leak detector, which you could use under a bath, for example. And if there's ever any leaks or anything, a lot of baths are enclosed. So you wouldn't necessarily see a leak until it's too late and it's coming down through the bottom floor and your ceiling's all hanging down from the water damage and you'd actually get that alert through and saying that the sensor has detected a leak um, within that and you can name the different units so you can actually know where that leak has been detected by the sensor as well. Now the warning devices for the system are your different sounders so we've got the external sounder I'm getting red or blue for the units you can also now get your company logos printed on the units as well um, so these would be your wireless sounding devices you've also got a internal sounder which can be added to the system so this would trigger internally in the property to notify you that someone's trying to break in or that an alarm's being triggered on the system itself within there so that's just a quick overview of the different products that are available within the X Pro range. And we will come on to a couple of new products that are going to be coming soon as well. But I'm just going to hand back over now to Lynn, who's going to cover the new PD Treble 62 compliance configuration, which is now available on the X Pro. Thank you, Nathan. That's a very good overview of the whole system. Yeah, so I will go through now the how to configure uh, the PD Triple Six Two on our AX Pro Hub. For some of you who are, may not be so familiar with PD Triple Six Two, uh, so PD Triple Six Two is basically a British standard that details a number of standards that should be used together to achieve compliance. So basically, what the main thing about compliance to PD 662 is about sending the confirmed alarm to the ARC platform so that we want to make sure that there is no false alarms. So in the later slides, I will introduce uh, in details, in different scenarios, uh, what are the confirmed alarm, what are the normal alarm. So th that will be in the future few slides. 
But here we on this in the snapshot here, you can see in the hub system configuration, there is option to enable PD 6262 uh, Not only uh, you need to enable the option here, but you also need to set up the PIR detectors or uh, magnetic contacts in the later slides that, that was in, is going to be introduced in the later slides to be compliant to PD 6262 This button here will, when you enable this button, the enable PD 6262 here, uh, then the other configurations of the PIR detector or the magnetic contacts will be shown in the settings. And uh, apart from enable the PD 6262 here, you also need to make sure that the hub is up to the is to the latest firmware. So the, um, the at least the firmware should be the firmware that is shown here on the slide. So in this, yeah, in this recording, you can see we go into the hub and system configuration and system management, and under there is there is a PD triple six two. Okay, so once you enable that PD triple six two on the hub, uh, then the first uh, we uh, I'll talk about the cross zone. So the confirmed alarm from the cross zone. So normally uh, for the cross zone is like one maybe one PIR detector triggered and then another detector is triggered. Then uh, that's a cross zone. So. For the PD6262, if the first zone alarmed, so the PIR, for example, PIR detector is alarmed, it will just upload normal alarm to the ARC platform. And if at the same time, the second alarm, for example, the magnetic contact is triggered, then the hub will upload a confirmed alarm to the ARC. And the interval between them is 16 minutes. So here you can see this is a PIR detector. Uh, in the PIR detector uh, setting, going to the uh, we we linked with another zone magnetic contact. So it's uh, like two zones, and you can set up the intervals between them. So that's about a cross zone confirmed alarm. Uh, so here is about a uh, delayed zone. So uh, for the delayed zone, we have uh, two different situations. The first situation, so when you have set the PIR detector as a delayed zone, then you can set up the entry delay time. And once when the entry delay time is timed out, the system will only upload a normal alarm. So it's not a confirmed alarm. And if there's another zone being triggered, and then the system will then upload a confirmed alarm. And then, then there's uh, the second situation is for also for the delayed zone before the entry delay time time timed out. If any other uh, zone is triggered, then the system will enable a pre-alarm time. And when the delay time is expired, then the uh, and the system hasn't onset the panel will then upload the normal alarm of the pre-alarm and then upload confirmed alarm. Yeah, so by default, the PIR detector is an instant zone. So for the confirmed alarm of the delayed zone, you need to change to delayed zone first. And then there's a setting coming up for the uh, entry delay time or exit delay time. For the delayed zone, also we, there is another setting. It's about PD6262 compliance, so it's the report sending delay. So once you enable that, the panel, so when the entry delay time has expired, the panel, of course, and the sounder will alarm, uh, but the panel will not upload the report to the ARC and app. The uh, panel will only upload the uh, a normal alarm to the ARC and the app once the uh, report sending delay time has expired. Uh, so just make sure that it's not we just want to make sure that this is not like a false alarm. If it is false alarm, you can just unset it. And if, if not, then after that report sending delay is expired, then it will send an alarm to the ARC. So it's also in the uh, PIR, uh, like the detector uh, setting, you need to have the delay zone setting and then report sending delay is there for the PD6262 compliance. And then for the emergency button, we have uh, three different ways to trigger the emergency button. So you can either long press the button or short press or double press. And then you can choose two of the methods that I, I just mentioned. 
and then the confirmed alarm will be sent to the ARC if those two methods were triggered. So if only one is triggered, the system will only upload a normal alarm. But if two is triggered, are triggered, uh, then it will be sending a normal alarm and a confirmed alarm to the ARC. I don't have the video of this one, so it's the okay. uh, final door exit for this. Yeah. So the final door exit uh, is for the delay zone as well, for the magnetic contacts. When you set the magnetic contact as a delay zone, there's a final door exit. So I'll give you an example here. So if you set the uh, exit delay time as 30 seconds, uh, that means when you set the alarm, there are 30 seconds before the system is set. And then if within 15 seconds, the door opens as the, you leave the house and then you close the door, so there are 10 seconds remained. Uh, then if you have this set final door exit, then the 10 seconds, when you close the door, the countdown will end, the system will be set. So instead of waiting for the 10 seconds to finish counting, uh, when you close the door, the system will just set after after that so uh, you don't need to wait for the uh, 10 seconds to to, to be finished uh, and also uh, please note this feature <clears throat> this need need the system to be locally set for example by the uh, keypad or by the uh, tag reader uh, on the hub uh, so not set on the, via the app and then this feature will be there Okay, so in the magnetic contact, you also need to set the zone as delay zone. And then uh, uh, apart from the report sending delay, there, was all, there will also be the final door exit setting here. And then for the wireless sounder, you can link the sounder with uh, different events. So for example, the, when the alarm is triggered, then of course the sounder will sound. Or you can also set when a confirmed alarm has been triggered, then the sounder will be alarm. Or, or when the lid has been opened, uh, there's a temper, uh, then the sounder will alarm. So you can set those different situations with a uh, sounder. Okay, on our hub and also on our uh, peripheral, like the keypad, uh, um, there are visual indicators to indicate the status of the either the hub or the peripherals. You can see on that shot here, on the hub itself, you can know whether the hub is faulty or not, or uh, whether the um, uh, internet is connected or not, or whether the hub is set or unset, and whether the system has been uh, alarmed, whether there's any alarm. Uh, and you can also set up these indicators to be on or not in our app or from the web browser as well. On the peripherals, it's very similar with the hub indicators, uh, whether it's for, uh, there's faulty in the system or whether the system is uh, connected to the whether the peripheral is connected to the hub or whether the system is on set or unset or not, uh, those, those uh, status can be shown on the device itself. <clears throat> and it will give you notice if you would like that. Also, so for the uh, Hike Pro Connect, uh, usually the hub is connected to the Hike Pro Connect for the installers and for the end user they will be using the high connect. And then for for the uh, alarm restoration, so when the alarm uh, has happened, uh, you need to restore the alarm. For, for the feature here, uh, the AX Pro, once the AX Pro has received a confirmed alarm, the end user will not be able to restore the, the alarm. It requires the installer to confirm the alarm and also restore the alarm on the Hike Pro Connect. So they, uh, the installer just need to, on the snapshot here, they just need to uh, restore the alarm on the on the app on the Hike Pro Connect app to restore the alarm. And then for communicating with the Arc, there is communication fault sending delay configuration. So our hub will, if there's any fault happened with the hub, then uh, the this communication fault report will be sent to the ARC platform. Uh, so the range of the delay time can be set between 30 minutes to 250 minutes. And then default delay time is 180 minutes. 
So it is also about PD 6662 compliance. So it's also in the hub system configuration. And on the, about the motion detectors, so motion detector, that means our PIR detectors uh, or PIR cam detectors. So those motion or uh, dual tech detectors. Uh, so the motion detectors, there, there are a few ways to set for the restoration. So when, so after, after the PIR detector is triggered, so when the PIR detector will be restored to be able to be triggered again. So you can set it up also uh, on the app itself. So so that uh, that's about the restore event, when the restore event will be sent to the ARC. So you can set, if it is off, then the PIR detector or the motion detector will not upload any restore event to the ARC. But once it is enabled, you can choose between whether it's immediate after alarm or after disarm the system. So this, this function is only used for the motion detectors. So the other detectors uh, will upload the status to the arc according to the like their actual status. So, so for example, for the magnetic contact, if the door is closed, then it's the alarm is restored. If it's open, then it, of course it's uh, triggered if the system is set, of course. Emotion detector uh, restore setting is in the system options. And I think that's the last slide for the PD Travel 62. And then Lynn's just got a couple of extra slides just going over some upcoming products um, that are going to be released from the X Pro range as well. And then we'll come on to the QA section. Um, so if you have any questions, just start putting them in the Q&A section, we'll get to those just after these product updates as well. Thank you, Nathan. So here is actually to show you our whole product family, including the new products uh, which are going to be released very soon. Um, so actually recently we just released um, two small accessories. Uh, one is a single input uh, transmitter, which allows the system to connect third-party wired a detector. So that's the, in the IO transmitter here, there's a more accessory uh, with three batteries up there. And so that's basically connect to third party wire detector. And then that third party wire detector can be connected to the AX Pro wireless system. And another small accessory that was just released recently is the 12 volt PSU. By default, our hub is powered by 220 volt AC power supply, but maybe in some situations, um, they may not have access to 220 volt AC power supply. They may require a low voltage DC power supply. So then in those kind of situations, we can use our uh, 12 volt PSU to be to replace the 220 volt PSU in the hub. So in this way, the hub then can be powered by the low voltage uh, power supply. And then under um, in the outdoor uh, detector section, uh, the new products uh, actually listed here is our TriTech PIR and microwave sensor detector. So the TriTech is two PIR sensor and one microwave sensor, and all in one uh, in that external detector. And also there is an optional camera module on top of this TriTech detector. Uh, so that's that will be an external kind of PIR cam detector as well if you have the camera module. Yeah, so that's the new products which is going to be released very soon. And also I would like to uh, highlight our AX Pro smart linkage with our uh, video intercom and also our CCTV cameras. So for our uh, Android, we have an Android indoor station in our video intercom range. So in that Android indoor station, there is a built-in High Connect app. So with that High Connect app, and also with your High Connect account logged in, you will be able to uh, manage and control all the High Vision devices in that High Connect account, that including AX Pro alarm and also access control and other cameras as well. So you'll be able to view the cameras, you'll be able to control the doors managed by the access control terminals, and you'll be able to set and unset the AX Pro 
on the Android indoor station. And also you'll be able to receive alarms coming from the AX Pro system on this Android indoor station. So the Android indoor station just have everything all in one unit. So it has intercom feature, of course, has ability to manage the doors, open the door remotely, and also has the ability to control, to um, set and unset the AX Pro alarm systems. In terms of um, a CCTV integration, so apart from the uh, PIR cam, of course, we have the video verification from the PIR cam, but we can also use our uh, high vision cameras that also includes the AccuSense camera. Um, so you can add directly the AccuSense camera to our AX Pro Hub. And those smart events from the AccuSense camera can be directly pushed to the AX Pro to, for, for the alarms. Uh, reaction so that those kind of smart events including intrusion alarm uh, intrusion detection line crossing all those smart events can be pushed to the ax pro hub so the ax pro hub is like an nvr uh, that's receiving alarms from the AX accusense and not only that you can also use the accusense camera as a camera that is linked with a maybe a pir detector uh, so you'll be able to see what's really going on once you receive a burglar alarm from the PIR detector. And so you can be able to view the footage from the AccuSense camera. And also if you add directly the AccuSense to the AX Pro Hub, you're, there will be also a seven second video, like a pre-alarm and post-alarm uh, seven second video sent to the app. So you will be able to see it on your app about what like what's going on. Or, uh, or maybe relate uh, associated with a PIR detector, for example. So there are two different applications. One is the uh, smart events from AccuSense can be pushed to the AX Pro uh, Hub. Uh, and the second is the uh, camera can be linked with a PIR detector for video verification. And that's all the slides there. Thank you, Lynn, that was great going through all that with us. So hopefully now we've kind of had an overview of the full X Pro range as well as the new PD Treble 62 compliance now in the X Pro kit. If you have any questions, if you put them in the Q&A section now and start going through those and also ask Lynn the um, questions as well. It is a lot more of an expert on X Pro than I am within them. If you are leaving the webinar now, you should be redirected to a feedback questionnaire. We'd be grateful if you could fill that out. It helps us to improve our webinars um, going forward further down the line as well. Um, so I'll just start going through the Q&As now. So Anonymous has asked, will the devices still continue to work in connected if the hub is offline? Um, so I'm thinking with this one, Lynn, the meaning with the fire detectors. So if they've got multiple fire detectors in the property, if one of them is triggered and the hub is offline, whether or not the other fire detectors would still sound their alarms as well. I thought it means the, um, uh, if the hub, so, so when the hub is offline, it's yeah. just the hub is not pushing alarms to the app. Or, or if it's not pushing to the alarms to the arc, but the um, a connection between the peripherals and the hub is still connected. And I think this so the, the peripherals not being able to connect to the hub itself. So if the actual hub was completely offline as such, so I know it's available in some other intruder panels as well. It depends on what what's offline is that so the hub can be connected to the outworld by uh, either the LAN, Wi-Fi, uh, SIM cards so there are a few ways and then the, the hub the, the connection between the hub and the other peripherals is the TriX or CAMX our own wireless protocols that is uh, working between them so if the if the network Offline network that means the LAN or Wi-Fi or SIM cards. Then it's it's just about the hub pushing the alarms to the app. But if it is about the triax, so so if it is not about the triax and camax, the communication between the peripherals and the hub, then they are they can still talk 
and then the the hub, the the, the, the PI, for example, the PI detector can still push the alarm to the hub, and the hub will uh, make the sound to sound. It's just that the hub will not push the alarm to the app, but because our hub can support LAN and Wi-Fi and SIM cards at the same time, so there are like a few backup there. If the LAN is off, then the Wi-Fi is on. Then if the Wi-Fi is off, then the SIM card is on. So it's um, so so that makes our system more reliable, more stable to have that actually online, not offline. Yeah. It's a very rare situation to be offline. If you have all four enabled, that's great. David said, I've installed Alarm with no SIM card, but the GPRS keeps showing when trying to set on the phone. David, if you could send an email with your contact details on, myself or one of the team will give you a call about that one, just run that through with you on there. And then James has asked, does the bell mode go into other bell modes? So I'm thinking if the door contact when the system is disarmed on some alarm systems, when you open the door, it can sound like a chime on your internal sounders. Is it possible to do that on the AX Pro um, unit, Lynn? Magnetic contact has the chime sound, yeah. actually, like a ding dong thing on yeah. the magnetic contact. And the other one, can you link the PIR with an IPC on HICPRO Connect uh, to bring up the live view of the camera um, within that? So that is achievable with the system, you can link them uh, with the HICVision cameras. That's one of the main benefits of you in the AX Pro system, especially if you're using HICVision CCTV. It's all, you can link all the different systems together within that so it becomes a much more powerful all-in-one security system with your CCTV cameras and your intruder alarm um, using the X-Pro solution and from that. And then the last question on there. So Anonymous has asked how many versions of the hub are there and what are the different variations between the hubs um, within that? Uh, there are two two versions for now. One is light hub, light level. One is mid level. Both levels, uh, both hubs have built-in Wi-Fi. So the light level has a LAN connection, Wi-Fi connection, and a one a SIM card a SIM card connection. And and then the mid level has LAN connection, Wi-Fi connection, and the dual SIM cards connection. And also the dual SIM cards support 3G and 4G. The light level only GPS. So it's um, so that's that's two different levels of hubs that you can choose from. Um, so I think that's all the questions there. And I know some have come through on email as well, which I'll get back to at the end of the webinar. So what we'll do at the end of this webinar, we will send through the slideshow that we've used, and I'll send through the full slide deck. Um, still got the videos as well. We're able to play back and the recorded version will get uploaded to our YouTube channel at the beginning of um, next week. Um, but thank you for joining us today. Um, our pre-sales contact details are on screen there should you have any questions that you'd like, like to run through with us. And a big thank you to Lynn today as well for joining us. It's been great to have you and thank you for taking the time today to do this webinar with us, Lynn. Thank you, thank you, Nathan. So I look forward to seeing you all on the next webinars that will be scheduled in the next week or so. But for now, thank you and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.